Hello, aspirants, viewers, and each and every person who's looking forward to step into the IT world, or each and every person who's already stepped into the IT world, a very warm and a hearty welcome to another session with me, Varun, on this channel, Tech Tablet. And in this session, we will be focusing on the third part of SAP HR and HCM series. This is a technical interview series for all those of you who are interested. And for all those of you who also like my videos, you can follow me on my Facebook or on my Instagram or the IDs mentioned below, which is Varun Rao underscore Gemini or Varun Rao underscore Gemini at yahoo.com. Well, my experience as an SAP developer has been into a app and UI5. And, you know, thanks to the way this module or this platform has been built, you know, because of which I had come in association with a lot of other module uh, developers as well, or people from other module like HR, MMPP, FICO, et cetera. And it is, you know, because of this knowledge that I'm able to share some interview question and answer series with the help of actual employees who are working on this module. Well, that's enough about me. So going forward, the first question would be to compare SAP HR to PeopleSoft HR. So I've listed out a couple of differences. The first one would be SAP HR has a lot of structures, you know, a lot of data structures which are allowed. But then talking about PeopleSoft on the other hand, which is the next best alternative that we have to SAP, it has limited structures of data that are allowed. Following by, we have restrictions on employee data, which makes it you know, more secure in SAP. But then you have to you know, go ahead with additional programming or source coding is required if these kind of restrictions are to be put for in PeopleSoft HR. And the third and the most important thing is SAP HR is completely dynamic in nature. While only a few aspects of PeopleSoft are dynamic, the rest all are static. That is a problem, right? So keeping all these things in mind, SAP HR has a better edge over PeopleSoft, though SAP HR or SAP in specific is pretty costly as compared to other modules or other competitors available in the market. But then the kind of robustness and transparency and accuracy it provides is impeccable. Right. The second one is what are the different structures in SAP HR that you are familiar with? Well, in most of the cases, there is a you know, need of different structures. Now, why do we need different structures is to represent a condition of, you know, an organization or it could be their policies or it could be, you know, their, their payroll, their implementation, X, Y, Z, it could be whatever. Uh, now, now, all these things are to be taken care of by HR. Now, you know, the HR hierarchy is divided into three parts, which is enterprise structure, organizational structure, and personal structure. So these are the three structures that you should be knowing about when you appear for an interview. So going to the third question, explain about the term infotype, right? Now, what do you mean? by infotype and now if someone asks you how would you define an infotype and what is the importance of it in SAP HR then we should be able to talk about it and we've already checked out this answer in the previous slide as well so this is a better variant or this is a different uh, explanation of the same right so you can say that it's arranged in different parts of speech right so now going forward, SAP HR tool basically needs the user data for accomplishing few of its tasks like record keeping and you know marinating the profile of any personnel. Now all these are done with these tools. Now all the information which is generally grouped into small units, now these uh, grouping of small units are also called as info units. And these can have four digit keys. And generally, info types are basically to do a predetermined function, or you know, they carry out a predetermined functionality. So that is the most important thing that you've got to remember. Next one. In payroll, how can the employees be grouped? The most common method is to group them on an overall 
allowance which are to be paid to them and this can vary depending on their pay structure and other benefits that are usually given to them right now just before we go to the next question i hope you all remember the drill that is to you know listen to the question mute or pause the answer for a second or pause the video for a second try to say the answer out loud without looking at the answer and then probably you can take a look at it and then probably you can also listen to it okay now it's very commonly or very famously said in an organization that nothing we do is more important than hiring people at the end of the day you bet on people not strategy now this part is to be taken care of by an hr right because it's people who make miracles it's not the strategies that make miracles and you know people like these get hired into the company only through or because of an hr right and secondly there is also another very important and a very famous saying that goes with the human resources that is human resource isn't a thing uh, or you know isn't a process that we do it's basically something that runs our business so you have a lot of things or a lot of quotes like these which are actually very true if you if, if you really go into the crux of it and try understanding them right so hr is a very important module in organization hr followed by you know fico some some modules which cannot be neglected right uh, the fifth one is how would you hire a new employee a new employee is hired or whenever a new employee is to be hired and maintained there are two transactions or t codes associated one is pa40 and the other is pa30 pa40 for uh, a new employee being hired and pa30 is when you want to maintain an info type for an employee the sixth one is can a posting run be deleted well yes it can be done if the bank has not initiated the transfer but then if the transfer is already done then you got to handle this in the upcoming payment okay because once the transfer is initiated it cannot be reversed and nowadays thanks to the internet and thanks to the networking world it's only i mean the delay is only till the payment is initiated once the payment is initiated the next minute the you know the employee or the person who's you know, receiving the amount would be able to see it in his bank uh, in, in in a matter of minutes so with, with things so fast this process is not reversible at least as of now it's not reversible the seventh one is what do you understand by personal structure well personal structure is defined as the structure of employees in an organization it basically comprises of employee groups and subgroups as well now what is the use of these groups that we create is something that you got to question yourself now these groups or you know these employee groups they basically allow you to divide the employees again into further fragments or groups and you can define the relationship to the enterprise now there are some important organizational functions that can be performed while using the functionality of grouping that is the first one you would be able to create default values when the data is input such as creating default values for payroll accounting etc the second one would be to create a criteria of selection to be used during evaluations the third one would be to create a unit that is to be used for authorization check all of these can be achieved the eighth one is how can you define a processing class it's okay now talking about processing class it's basically a, a, a characteristic of wage type that is uh, you know considered for the purpose of determining the way the processing is to be done in a payroll run now it is a trusted approach and it is also useful for providing favorable results in the payroll so this is the basic definition of a processing class ninth one being explained personal area well it is basically sub unit of a company code the first point the second point is it is identified as an organizational unit which represents an area of an enterprise now this is organized according to the administration of the organization not 
with standing that as we all know when you talk about administration of an organization there are a lot of elements which get included like personal admin time management payroll accounting you know n number of things that are to be managed now all these are basically represented by a four character alpha numeric code now it can be alphabets on the whole or it can be numeric for example the personal area code of a corporation is corp or cor1 now if they have five corporations it will be cor1 2 3 4 5 so they can name it accordingly but the most important thing is four digit the last question that we have in this video is explain the personal sub areas now a personal sub area is basically a part of a personal area which can again be subdivided according to geographical location or the strategic line of business for example all those who are in london or all those who are the managers all those who are team leads so this is basically a personal sub area you have different groupings or different variant of groupings that can be created within a personal sub area wherein some are um, you know some of them also intersect each other or you can say that some of them uh, cast a shadow upon each other while some of them are totally independent of each other well, for example an employee might be in us and also a manager so he would be in both the groupings the first one is his strategic line or position and the second one is his geographical location while there could also be another manager who's in india so he is there's nothing special because india is default when uh, i mean keeping india as the base location of the organization so you know things like these are very critical when you look at them or when you examine them at a very deeper level okay so these are the things that I wanted to talk about or these are the questions that I wanted to talk about in this video. I really hope you have enjoyed watching and if in case you did, I would request you to take a minute and hit the like button as it would encourage us to make more videos and also if you feel that this might help another employee or your fellow colleague, hit the share button because if this video is being useful at least for a few, I think the motive is achieved and also if there's anything that's missing or if you want to add more value onto the material that's already available please use the comment section below thanks a lot hoping to look forward in the next video with more content and more information that's yet to be shared and exchanged this is me varun Rao, logging off all the best for the interview that you're about to appear for